Good evening, everyone. I hope you've had a terrific Tuesday. I'm excited about tonight's guests and I think you'll enjoy them. So let's get started. We kicked off our Wednesdays in the Word revival and welcomed Dr. Clavin Lee all the way from California. Tomorrow night, we're back at it with Dr. F. Bruce Williams, the senior pastor of Bates Memorial Baptist Church in Louisville, Kentucky. I'm looking forward to it, and we hope you can join us virtually and be blessed by the Word of God. There are so many things happening on the Avenue this month. High school seniors, you already know what time it is. Don't forget to fill out those educational grant applications. They are due on May 28th, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to our Minister to Youth and College students, Reverend Richard Boone IV. Then we have Entrepreneurship 201, From Purpose to Profit, brought to us by the Financial Empowerment Ministry. If you have been thinking about starting a new business, this interactive and informative event is for you. It takes place via Zoom on Saturday, May 22nd from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. To register, visit our website or contact empowerment at wheelerbc.org for more information. Our social justice ministry has planned an awesome two-day event. It is called Justice Rising, Faith Dismantling Injustice. You do not want to miss it. The keynote address will be given by none other than our U.S. Senator, Reverend Dr. Raphael Warnock, the first black U.S. Senator to represent the state of Georgia. There will be panels with prominent politicians, community leaders, and activists on the topics of policing in Houston and how to stand against voter suppression. There will also be breakout sessions focused on criminal justice reform, education reform, community resource development, legislative reform, and voter engagement. Invited speakers include U.S. Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee, Texas State Senator Boris Miles, NAACP Houston Chapter President Bishop James Dixon, former Houston County Clerk Chris Hollins, and more. This conference offers something for the entire family. So once you register, you will be able to create your personal schedule for the weekend. Sign up today and we'll see you on May 21st and 22nd. For the full list of events, head on over to wheelerbc.org slash events. I don't know who comes up with all of these holidays, but I am told that yesterday was National Clean Up Your Room Day, and it conveniently took place the day after Mother's Day. One of the issues that people have had during this season of being at home more is keeping the house clean. Now that we're doing more work from home and children are doing virtual learning, it is even more difficult to keep everything neat but it is also so important for us to keep our spaces decluttered so that we can focus. It's amazing how much the little things can make such a huge difference. Another amazing woman who knows a little something about making spaces beautiful is Ms. Morgan Velez, a registered interior designer in the state of Texas. Whenever we are all able to enter the cathedral and the Christian education complex, you will see some of her creative touches as she is one of the people working diligently on this project and doing a fabulous job. Thank you for joining us on The Avenue, Morgan. We're talking about organizing our homes and the various spaces we occupy. You have an extensive background in interior design, so please share a little bit about that with us. Um, so I'm, I'm with Perkins and Will, and I've been in the industry for about seven years. Um, I do more commercial design rather than residential, but um, that design can go both ways. Mm -hmm. um, and I started a little bit in sports design, and right now I'm, I'm helping on the Wheeler Church project and um, also do a little bit of corporate commercial interiors, so office spaces. Nice. So what does sports design mean? So stadiums, rec centers, um, different type of athletic venues, there's an interior portion to each of those, yeah. of, like locker rooms or um, the spaces that the athletes or fans use. Um, we, ha we do have a sports division as well, so that's something that I was very passionate about in the beginning, um, and it's been fun to do. 
So now you're working with us on the cathedral and the CEC spaces. And for those who don't know, the CEC is the Christian Education Complex. What we will see is the finished product, but there are so many intricacies and things that the average person doesn't even consider when it comes to a project like this. Can you take us through what these months have been like and share some of those small details that make a huge difference? Yeah, so um, one of the overarching concepts on the Wheeler Church Project was how do, they, how do we bring the community together with the building? How does the church bring the community together? Um, and this church has a lot of historical background, as you know. Um, it's a cultural rich hub for this community of Third Ward. Um, and we wanted to bring that in, and you'll see that through the architecture, um, the church doors. You can see there's a direct slide from the old church doors to the, through the atrium, out over the community, and you can see to downtown. Um, so that was one theme through the architecture that we wanted to incorporate. Um, and then with colors, we wanted to tie back to traditional Baptist church colors, black history, so we have deep purples and golds and warm and rich colors throughout the sanctuary. And then on the CEC portion, um, we wanted to lend more towards children, so we mm -hmm. have bolder colors. Um, it's learning spaces, too, so we have a lot of educational furniture, um, and it's designed specifically for that use on the CEC side. Nice. I'm going to ask a little bit about um, each of those things you just mentioned later. But when you have a project like this with so many different rooms, like you mentioned, children, there's a children's space, there's an adult space, um, there's an office space. So where do you begin? So lots of, um, so a design threat in the beginning. We meet with the community. We meet with the leaders of the church. We, we talk with them. We have several meetings. Um, what, what's their purpose? What do they want out of this space? Mm -hmm. And then we, we provide different designs. We go back to the drawing board a few different times. Um, architecture and interiors wise, we're all a team. Um, and we provide the building. Mm -hmm. Then we start to show finishes and furniture. I've had the pleasure to work with some of the CEC folks recently on some of the furniture, getting into specific functions, like yeah. how do you use this space? What is needed on a day-to-day -day basis? What is um, the function of this space and how is it gonna be used? And you can get into that detail with the client as well. Yes, so with children's areas at churches and schools, as you mentioned, they're, they're bright, they're colorful. Um, but does color matter when designing for adults as well? Um, when we talk about the sanctuary, even the office spaces, are we gonna use the same bright colors or do we need to use more? dark purple, dark colors, purples and yeah, blues. For sure. So on the sanctuary, um, we did some more muted purples and golds and um, for the neutral colors are more um, warm and inviting colors. Mm -hmm. And then when you get to the CEC, we're using blues and oranges and bright, like full saturation, kind of to keep them engaged and have them excited about the space and want to come to the space. But on the adult levels, like on the second floor for the CEC, um, we've toned it down a bit. So mm -hmm. it's not too in your face yeah. for the adults, um, but there's definitely, you wanna know your audience when you're picking that kind of stuff. Yeah, knowing your audience is important. So each room will give us a different feel as we walk through and basically just take a tour and see the different spaces, we'll get a different feel yeah. for what that space for is sure. supposed to be. Nice. Well, which colors would you say work the best? I know you said you use muted colors when it came to the spaces for um, the adult rooms, but can you take us, talk to us in detail about what a purple might make us feel or what a blue might make us feel? Do you have knowledge on that area? Um, so a blue is definitely more calming. Mm -hmm. um, I think purple is pretty similar. Red can mean sometimes mean anger and <laughs> maybe not red and yellows might not want to be bright they want to mm. be more mu muted mm. um let's see yellow can sometimes be warning um so you don't want to use it bright but i think the lighter toned down versions is really great and and, and here we've used the golds um which is beautiful with the pur deep purples nice so we talked about the culture and um the rich history and the community um in which we're placed so what were some of the things that were must-haves and must-not-haves when you were built, when we were talking about building and furnishing the, both the cathedral and the CEC? Um, one of the big overarching concepts of this design 
um, was bringing the community, how to bring the community into the building or how to pair the two. And yeah. so by doing that, one of the big things that was um, designed is to see the old church doors, which are from the Rice Hotel back in, in the day. Mm -hmm. They've brought those to the, the old church doors. You can see that direct line down the atrium. You see out over the community, and you see to downtown, which is where the old Rice Hotel used to be. So bringing that historical background to the community um, was something that was wow. one of the main concepts. And our, our late Phil Freelon was one of the designers our, and architects on this project. And nice. He's also done a few other projects in Houston. What as are well. some of those other projects? So he was a part of um, the, the Emancipation Park renovation. Mm. Um, and so that's also in Third Ward and yeah. very important to this community as well. And it, Emancipation Park is a landmark to not only Texas, but the Houston area. And so being able to create a community hub for um, Third Ward where they can congregate, they can work out, exercise, be together, be a community, um, and giving them everybody that opportunity to have that. Wow, that's awesome. And he was also part of the Smithsonian. Um, he was one of the architects on that project in DC as well. I think that's super awesome. Um, there's also a part that I hear, um, an aspect of this project that has to do with art. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so in the um, atrium of the church, there is a gallery space, mm -hmm. and it's a kind of another way to bring the community aspect into it. So right now, Floyd Newsom's artwork is going up in there, and he's has deep connections to the Third Ward, and um, it's a great opportunity to bring community members in to showcase their artwork. And I believe also artwork from Haiti and Africa will be up in there, so it kind of shows the different outreach or communities you guys do reach through as a church organization. Wow, awesome, that's, that's great. Um, and it's, it's glad, I'm glad that you said that so that people can kind of get a feel of how, I guess how just personal and how intimate this, even though it's such a large um, space, the community aspect is really there. Um, it's something that I think will bring people and families and the community together for decades to come. So that's, that's awesome. For sure. Um, Let's switch gears a little bit and talk about our homes and our offices. Um, what are some tips that you can give us on how to maximize a space? You're in interior design, so you know how to make a space look and feel amazing when it comes to colors and furniture and mirrors. So what are some of those things? Um, for example, the support staff here, we work in cubicle spaces. Um, in our Christian Life Center. So what are some ways that we can make space for decorations and pictures and paperwork and staplers and all those things that are on our desk without making them junky? Yeah, so it's been fun because I've worked on those new cubicles that you guys are getting. <laughs> I've worked through all the furniture aspect on that, so that's been fun to be a part of. Um, but definitely maximizing storage. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at how much storage do we actually need um, and then what do you guys, how much files do you have? What, what do you guys have on your desks as far as office space goes? Um, but I think one of the biggest things is clean up and clean out. Mm -hmm. So going through your stuff on a regular basis, figuring out what do I really need? Have I used it in a year <laughs> or how long has it been sitting out here? Yeah. That goes for your house or home. Um, or just having a regular clean schedule. That kind of lets you know what inventory you have. So when designing a new home, you know what items need to be stored or what you want to display. You kind of know your inventory that you're working with. Um, and then after that, I would say um, going, when you're buying new stuff, you want to have a balance of um, function versus meaningfulness. Mm -hmm. So you, you'll have items that kind of are your own that you really love or they have been an heirloom or a picture on your desk, something that's meaningful to you versus um, a furniture piece that's functional. You need a desk chair. Yeah. You need a refrigerator in your kitchen. Um, so those are function items and how you use them and how is it going to work for you. So having a, a balance of the two, I think, is very important in that kind of aspect. Awesome. Well, before you go, we talked about um, all of all things regarding space and um, declutter and all of that. But if you can narrow it down to one general rule of thumb that we should keep in mind when decorating or repurposing or redesigning any space, what would that one thing be? I think... Um, when, it, when you're designing your own space, it's yours. Mm -hmm. take, take 
full ownership of it. It's fun. It's something, some people are scared of it, but it's, it's your space. This is your time to show you. Um, and I think that's something to just embrace. Don't be afraid. There's not a wrong or right way. It's your space. You want to portray it how you, how you do. Okay. Well, thank you so much again um, for coming and speaking to us on the Avenue. Thank you so much for having me. How awesome was that? Our conversation made me even more excited for us to be able to worship together in the cathedral. We hope that you all were able to jot down some of those tips on how to make your spaces more enjoyable. If you have made any changes to your home, office, classroom, etc., we want to see your creativity. Show off those skills by posting before and after pictures of how you've decluttered, redecorated, and reorganized during this pandemic. And use the hashtag HomeEditWABC. I can't wait to see what you all have created. Don't forget to join us virtually tomorrow at 7 p.m. for Wednesdays in the Word on all of our streaming platforms. Thank you so much for tuning in this evening. If you enjoyed tonight's show, Share this video, tag a few friends, and stay connected. Although we can't be together physically, you're still on the avenue. <laughs>